live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer. You're watching Silicon Angle's production of theCUBE here at VMworld 2017 in Las Vegas. Happy to welcome to the program two first time guests, but from a company we, we've talked to many times. So, uh, Rex uh, Backman and Rob Young, both with Red Hat. Uh, Rex is the senior, uh, senior principal product marketing manager, and Rob is the senior manager of Red Hat product management. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining thanks. us. Thanks for having us. We're All right. happy to be here. So, sorry, you're tripping over sometimes titles and things like that, just hey. like you know, acronyms go out there sometimes. So, you know, uh, I, I go back, uh, you know, I, I started working with Red Hat before Red Hat Advanced Server came out, which became Red Hat Enterprise uh, Server. Uh, then when we talk about virtualization, it used to be Rev, R-H-E-V. And now it's RHV. Yeah. So you know, making it, it simpler. Sometimes you know the the, the people say in the same place, and uh, you know the, the the badges change. Other times that things things change a lot. Yep. So uh, wh why don't we start with Rob? Tell us a little bit about you know how long you've been at Red Hat, your role there. So I've been with Red Hat now for uh, two years, almost to the date. Uh, I come from a uh, open source pedigree, so I worked with uh, companies like MySQL, MongoDB to develop uh, not only the open source model, but a community around those products and a commercialized version that uh, people trust to run in their data centers, so. All right, and, and Rex, yourself? I'm fairly new to Red Hat, joined about three months ago. Um, virtualiz virtualization background is really from the world of, of Microsoft. So uh, happy to be at Red Hat. You know, we've got a strong offering with Rev, and we just want to help uh, get people uh, more educated on it and the opportunities we have to help solve their problems. All right. Um, it's always an interesting dynamic. You talk, you know, virtualization. We spent, you know, a decade. It was, well, you know, VMware's ascendancy and the threat of Microsoft and oh, KVM and you know, Rev and everything were going to be there. Uh, there's there's a nice Red Hat booth, uh, you know, on the show floor. Yep. Um, Always customers have had Linux sitting as guests in there, and you know, lots of those. I'm sure you probably have stats for me as to how much of that's been Red Hat over the year, but tell us about the, the relationship, you know, VMware, Red Hat, virtualization. So we see uh, the relationship with VMware and, and other you know, companies and, and partners within our ecosystem is, is very positive. Uh, if you look at the workloads that are running on VMware primarily, a lot of those are, are Red Hat Enterprise Linux applications that are running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so we see it as a very positive relationship, and you know, moving ahead, we see uh, a challenge uh, in maintaining a, a virtual, virtualization footprint within uh, VMware, within the market, because of the evolution of the market, and we see that virtualization is becoming more of a commodity-based feature, and the challenges that it poses to uh, partners like VMware going forward to uh, evolve along with that model within the market. So. Well, if, if virtualization is a, a commodity, and it's becoming a commodity, uh, what's the what is the Red Hat approach with with KVM and RHEL in terms of uh, I, you know it is it's parts of it are commodity commodity but certainly the stack and the system it plugs into is not yeah, yeah. I would I'd say it's it, it's also very foundational um, you know virtualization is everywhere um, and I think the value Red Hat brings to it is is you know the the capabilities we have in our team capabilities we derive from the open source model. Uh, and then virtualization with Rev, uh, bundled in with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you know, it, it's foundational. And then if you bring in other aspects of the Red Hat stack around manageability, cloud, things of that nature, I think you know, we have a, a strong offering, a good offering that people can choose from. And I think that's really important for us, is, is our customers have choice. Uh, and then us, you know, we differentiate ourselves on the open source model, primarily. Rob, it, it keeps becoming a you know, more and more complex world. We've been watching for years, it was the pull of kind of cloud against the data center. Now we're even seeing edge pulling uh, at the cloud. But let, let's go back to the data center. You know, what, what, what's, what's Red Hat's viewpoint? What are you hearing from customers? What, what do they need in the data center? And you know, how, how are they you know, viewing that these days? So what we see in the modern data center, one, the workloads that we, we see around mode one applications that are uh, legacy applications, that footprint is not going away. It's going to continue to have a bare metal footprint as well as a virtualized uh, in private cloud. So what we're doing uh, 
and what our customers are asking us for is a transition from pure virtualization or bare metal to virtualization to hybrid cloud. And what we're doing now with our engineering efforts, uh, not only uh, upstream, but also from a proprietary and configuration standpoint, uh, all open source by the way, uh, is we are giving customers the, the option to standardize on a virtualization platform built on KVM that shares components with uh, hybrid cloud technologies for mode two. Uh, so what we see from our customers is they're, they're maintaining uh, mode one, but buying and planning for mode two. And that's how we see the, uh, the on-premise data center uh, market heading at this point. Yeah, could, could, I'd like you to unpack that a little bit for, for our audience because you know, big discussion this week is you know, public cloud, yeah sure it has virtualization, but it, you know, it's, not, it's not VMware. So now we've got this one option, you know, VMware and AWS starting, starting to roll out. Right. Are, are you saying that you know, my data center, I can really be compatible with the public clouds and you know, is that the, the red hat pieces on both sides or you know, is it native to what AWS and Google are doing? How, how, how does that dynamic work? So we, uh, the way that we're approaching it is we look at it not only as a, a software solution but also as a paradigm shift in uh, more openness, uh, APIs, things are more uh, generic, so uh, if you want to plug into a common framework for management, as an example, or deployment, uh, you can easily do that via the open APIs that are available in the open source community. So as an example, with uh, uh, we, we provide a management solution called CloudForms, and with that platform, it's part of the Red Hat stack and solution, we allow customers to manage not only their virtualized environment, but also their hybrid or private clouds, but also AWS as well. So if they've got instances running on AWS, they can manage it through one pane of glass. And uh, this is our strategy going forward, but it's not tomorrow, this is happening today mm -hmm. uh, with our Red Hat stock platform. Yeah, so Rex, uh, you, you've got a background in networking, networking front and center, and yep. such, but networking and security even more than ever that I've see, seen it is at VMworld. H how does that fit into to Red Hat's whole story? Um, you know, if you look at the world of virtualization, obviously we've gone from the story of server virtualization, network virtualization, storage virtualization, and those are, those are the antis into the game now. And you know, I think Red Hat, with what we provide, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Obviously the foundation started with uh, you know, the knowledge that our R&D team brings from their open source background around Rev and server virtualization, but also now network virtualization capabilities and also uh, what Red Hat has around storage. Uh, you know, so I think we cover those three antes into the game of, of virtualization and then you know, it, it, it adds to you know, the equation Rob was talking about, which is the whole Red Hat stack, which I think is, is, is a good, good, good story. And again, choice for our customers. Mm -hmm. I think actually 2017 is actually a really interesting year for virtualization. We're at an interesting era, right? Uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, you had some you know, market dominance. You had, uh, you know, you're looking at Microsoft and VMware, like we talked yep. about, but, and, and other, uh, we had Zen and KVM came up, and, it, they were a little scary for people, right? They were they were developing. They weren't as they weren't as a mature of a stack. I do think now uh, th that the average admin in, in an average uh, uh, you know IT estate uh, is actually dealing with the fact that oh, I could actually manage multiple hypervisors. Look at a mixed yep. estate. It's not as scary anymore. The technology is more mature, more manageable. Can you talk a little bit about that scenario of a mixed estate? Like if uh, if you have a uh, you know part of your part of your uh, data center is running running VMware, what kinds of use cases and what kinds of management scenarios would you as you start to add uh, um, you know Red Hat uh, virtualization to the mix? So the way that uh, the dynam dynamic that we see in play right now is uh, there's a huge install base on VMware, mm -hmm. and a lot of customers, uh, a lot of clients, a lot of partners are looking at that relationship now and and deciding if they should invest elsewhere in other solutions. So what we provide is, is the ability to manage those environments, the clients for Hyper-V, for VMware, for, for Red Hat, uh, all within one pane of glass, but it, it allows customers, one, the, the choice to, to manage that heterogeneous environment built on multiple hypervisors, but it allows them to evaluate if maybe the Red Hat solution is better for them and if we can help them with uh, V2V uh, migrations yeah. as well, workload migration, mobility, uh, I think that's the perfect uh, scenario for Red Hat, an open source company I, and yeah. choice. And I think you know, some of the customers, you know, public case studies that we've promoted, um, some of the attributes that they've been looking at that shifted them over towards the Red Hat side was 
you know, performance, you mm -hmm. know, was very, very important. Uh, scalability was was very, very important. Um, so I think, you know, it, it yeah. depends customer to customer. And I was, I was actually wondering about, so is it, do we see like re-platforming uh, as people are re-architecting? Are these greenfield uh, opportunities? I mean, I, I imagine, again, it's all across the board, but any, yeah. any uh, have you seen any particular kind of common patterns of, of people standing up a, a, maybe a new business critical app on a new platform, maybe they're re-architecting it to be a little bit more cloud native? Uh, anything, any particular uh, directions like that? I, I think you know some of the things I've seen recently is uh, an enterprise IT organization um, has decided to go down an open source path for their world, and then that kind of is a strong point for us. Um, you know, Intermountain Health is is a company that the, there's some news on from us last week is is an example of that. Um, you know, British Airways is another customer like that. And you know, as Rob has said, you know, it's it's large companies, big brands, down to you know commercial companies as well, or, or governments or education. Um, so I think it's you know it could be performance, it could be open source. So open source is definitely one of the drivers. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, and what we're seeing there with open source is that uh, the more trust is built in open source, the more enterprise adoption, yep. and the, the cost effectiveness of working with a development team that's worldwide, a QE team that's worldwide, really helps to build the uh, stability uh, of the products that you know companies like Red Hat build subscription models around. So there's no vendor lock-in as well uh, for a proprietary licensing model. And we find that uh, many customers are, are very open to that discussion as opposed to you know, the alternatives. Uh, one of the other discussions we've been having at VMworld for the last couple of years is this whole containers uh, discussion. <laughs> is it VMs versus containers? V is it containers inside, uh, you know, VMs? Um, Red Hat Summit, I mean, huge discussion. Uh, there, there was a super popular t-shirt. On one side it said, Linux is yeah. containers, and on the other side it says, you know, containers are Linux. Yep. Uh, so, where do you see that discussion? You know, any. Uh, what do you think about how VMware's been uh, looking at things? There was a you know big announcement about you know VMware and through the pivotal uh, activity, kind of embracing Kubernetes. Uh, Red Hat, I'm sure, saying, "Hey, welcome to the party, right?" <laughs> you know. So uh, <laughs> there's an interesting dynamic with containers because containers, Kubernetes, you know, you name the project, is purely an open source play. And if you look at you know, the, the, the projects, the contributors, uh, most of this is going to be built on an open source model. So uh, proprietary software companies you know, like, like VMware are going to be challenged to adapt uh, and evolve you know, how they develop, how they contribute, the presence within those communities. Now, Red Hat is uniquely positioned in that our model has been for the last 25 years that we're purely open source. Everything we do is, is out in the community and it lends itself very naturally, not only uh, the way we've done uh, commercialization of, of Linux, uh, but we're doing that now with, with containers as well. And if you look at the dynamic in the market, you know, a lot of people believe that there's VM and or containers and this is really a, a symbiotic uh, complementary re relationship. 85% of the workloads uh, for containers runs within a virtualized environment and containers and, and virtualization fill gaps for each other that you know is just a natural complement and because Red Hat you know is already comfortable uh, operating in the open source environment in this way we think we're we're just in a very good position to lead in both areas so the, um, you mentioned open source um, commercialization, and uh, uh, Jim Whitehurst, uh, the CEO of, of Red Hat, was, yep. has been on theCUBE. We, Stu and I uh, talked with him at uh, Red, the last OpenStack Summit. Yep. I was super impressed by his uh, insight and grasp into the economics of open source and how Red Hat has been able to uh, build a model like that. Uh, can you talk at all about data center, or IT spend in general, and CapEx and OpEx, where it's going in, in, an, in a more open source driven world. Sure. Uh, where do you put your money then? So do you want to answer or do you want? <laughs> I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Or where um, can you now invest your money? How do yeah. we, uh, that, why don't we, that's a little better. Yeah, I, I think it, it's really interesting. And you know, I'm going to answer this question from the perspective of a three month Red Hat employee, but with you know, a lot of experience in the industry with proprietary companies, if you will. I, I think the the value, the commercialization of what Red Hat has done is 
is you know there's the upstream aspects of open source and the programs available there, and then there's the downstream commercialization of what Red Hat has done, which is wrapping the value of a Red Hat subscription around that open source project. And I think what we see in our customers in terms of budget spend, you know, more on the OPEX side than the CAPEX side in, in our case, is you know, looking at that price point. Because some of our customers, well many of our customers, if not all of our customers, there is a price sensitivity. I think a lot of customers now maybe not be, and this may be kind of a crazy thing to say, may not be as price sensitive as they used to be. Now it's more about innovation, agility, speed to market. But still, the economics is important, and I think the value Red Hat provides and the uniqueness in the model that Jim and his crew cracked early on to start Red Hat is the ability to provide that Red Hat subscription at value for open source, and what we see is that it's most of the time in cases, you know, it's an attractive price point, and that's how we win customers. So I, th I think, you know, long-winded answer to your question is I think there's there's a strong future. Um, you see more and more companies adopting open source in their programs. I think Red Hat, you know, is the you know the leader of that, in, in in good shape. Rob, why don't you just give us the, the, the final word, conversations you're having at the show, how, how are you know, people here in the VMware community you know, em embracing, is it an open source discussion, is it the innovation uh, and kind of kind of the new features, what, what, what's bringing them by to talk to Red Hat? So I think it's, it's a mixture. So what we're seeing is a lot of interest in, in Red Hat solutions, the Red Hat stack, and I think customers are, are now looking at Red Hat as a, a good enough alternative to more pricey alternatives or more pricey options. And if you look at what we've done from a strategic standpoint is much like we did with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, we are now using uh, Enterprise Linux as a foundational uh, support pillar, so to speak, for the Red Hat stack. So uh, if you look at the APIs that we're, we've generated, uh, a lot of the interest that I'm getting, the question I'm getting, not only from customers, but from folks out on the show floor, other vendors, is what, what's your API look like? Can I learn more about it? And to me, that's the leading edge of a, of a wave of you know, maybe that partner pavilion looking a little bit more red <laughs> uh, in the, the days to come. So uh, just my opinion. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, I know John Trier and I have been talking for you know a few years now. But that API economy, is something that's been coming into this world, and that intersection between you know what uh, all the Linux admins have known for a long time yeah. as to their operational model uh, matches a lot of what we're seeing in the cloud. So Rob Young, yeah. Rex Backman, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with a lot more coverage here from VMworld 2017. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>